Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today we're doing my ever popular almanac series, looking at what witchcraft you can do on which day and why during the month of April. As always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month of April, which you can incorporate as part of your daily practice. And then we're going to look into the day-to-day nitty-gritty detail of what witchcraft and when and why on what day. And so with that said, let's start with my general April overview. April surely is one of the prettiest months. The flowers are starting to bloom, the sun starts to shine. I mean, it's been utterly hideous here. And the birds return. And this is one of the sort of big events in April. It is the month of birds. It is not just the time when the birds have returned to this land. It is also the time when they're laying their eggs. And this I always think is rather charming because whilst the females, they lay their eggs at dawn in the nest and the male birds are singing their hearts out, protecting the females whilst they lay their precious cargo and singing, saying, this is my territory, it's mine, it's mine throughout the land at this time of the morning, which is why the bird song really starts to ramp up a bit here. It's those men protecting their territory and their wife, sweetly. This is what April is known for. It is egg season. We are decorating eggs, we're eating eggs, we're having Easter eggs. The bunny is bringing us eggs. In fact, eggs are abounding at the moment and it's such a joyous time. The Anglo-Saxons used to bury their great dead with eggs because they recognised that the egg was a symbol of rebirth, fertility and renewal. And that's exactly what eggs are. Any witchcraft that you do with any eggs is all about fertility, rebirth, renewal and you can enhance your magical practice so much by using eggs at this time. Of course, Easter eggs have been going for generations upon generations. In fact, as long as we've had Easter. And by that, I don't mean the Christian festival of Easter. I mean our original festival of Easter from our goddess, Easter, who was a goddess of fertility in the spring and had pet hairs, which is possibly where the Easter bunny comes from. Who knows? We don't. Nobody does. But in my mind, the correlation is too strong to ignore. April is not just known for the variety of birds that sing their hearts out in this month. It's also known for the variety of flowers which start appearing. April, being a month of fertility and love, is therefore deeply associated with violets. And not simply because violets are currently carpeting our floors. Violets have a huge familiarity with not just the fertility and love that we express through them, but also with the dead. Young children were buried with violets and violets were planted over their graves because violets have an innate youthfulness about them. The beautiful violet scent that we all know and love. I've got some Devon violets perfume, which the children are like, oh, it's so grim, so old-fashioned, it's a bit like a granny. But I love it. I love it. However, the scent of violets is said to ward off evil. And so if you string violets in a posy and leave them hanging from your doorknob, especially on difficult days of the year, such as the 30th of April, when all sorts of things are abounding, a violet posy will protect your home from negative entities or energies. April is all about the weather, is it not? You know, there's the April showers which come down and spoil our outdoor plans. However, these April showers are presaging a good summer. So we're looking forward to them, aren't we? Because we want the sun in the summer. April is also the time when the world does start to open up. We're outside. We are making the most of that spring sunshine and those longer days, which thank goodness, because I'm sure I get sad in the winter months, you know, the seasonally affected disorder. I'm sure I get that. It's also the time when the trees are beginning to bud. April has a lot of forecast about it. So if you have an oak and an ash tree side by side, if your oak tree is budding before your ash tree, then we are in for a splash of rain. But if your ash tree is budding before your oak tree, then we're in for a soak. The other thing to look out for is babies. 
the season of light is in its infancy as well as everything else. And isn't it charming having ducklings? So that is my general overview. We're going to look at the beauteousness of nature coming and opening up because April is named from the Roman word apparire, which means to open. And this is what we're seeing now. So with that said, let's get on to the nitty gritty and day to day detail. And as always with these, we're going to start with the 1st of April. The 1st of April is a busy day, so buckle in. We're going to start with what you should do when you first wake up, which is to say, why rabbits? I did mention this in the March video, but this is a particularly auspicious day to say your white rabbit's the first thing that comes out of your mouth. It will harness the nature of it being the Easter festival, which is named for the goddess Easter. And she had a hare as her companion, or could turn into a hare, or was a hare-headed goddess. All of the above, most likely. So saying white rabbits and give you great luck for the month ahead. The 1st of April is also April Fool's Day. So traditionally on April Fool's Day, you would send people out on a fool's errand, such as to go out and buy a pot of striped paint or a pint of chicken's milk or to buy a book by the mother of Eve. But you have to do this to make a fool of someone by midday, otherwise you are the fool. My sister, when she was in her early tweens, had been away for a few days and rang my mother up on the 1st of April and said, Mother, I just want you to know I'm pregnant. And she put the phone down, you know, after saying, you know, I'll let you think about it and, you know, blah, 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 and put the phone down. My mother, in an utter utter complete frenzy brings me up and goes darling darling this is pregnant your sister's pregnant i don't you know and so we then sit and discuss about what you know what should do and i'm like you don't worry you know it's fine you know i'll help it'll be all right you know it will all be fine it'll work out in the end Anyway, my sister's then frantically trying to get through to my mother because she's been on the phone to me for hours at this point um you know going oh uh because of course it's an April Fool's. <laughs> it does make me laugh even now. And finally, this is a day for weather forecasting. For if it thunders on All Fool's Day, then it is a good year for crops of corn and hay. So we'll have a nice summer. So let's look out for thunder. I quite like a thunderstorm. It's quite exciting, isn't it? The 2nd of April is mentioned in Reginald Scott's The Discovery of Witchcraft, a book about witchcraft from 1584. And he mentions that if you wish to have long blonde hair, which is beautiful, then you should cut a lock of your hair and hang it up on this day before your idol. And then the next day you will have long and blonde hair. The 6th of April is the day when the cold leaves over the water and you should not have any more central heating. This is the day, traditionally, that it goes off. I mean, I'm not turning off my central heating on the 6th. I couldn't think of anything more ghastly. That means I'll be cold. But anyway, traditionally, you should. But I'm not. Definitely not. The 8th of April is the night of the new moon. Astrologers believe that every new moon takes on the characteristics of the sign that that new moon appears in. This new moon is in Aries. Aries is all about fun, creativity and larks. Hence why we get the April Fools, I presume. So this is a great month for you to plan out and enact all the most creative and fun things that you can think of. Now, excitingly, the 8th is also the day when we have a total solar eclipse. The path of the solar eclipse starts in Mexico and travels up through the eastern states of America and ends up in Canada. Solar eclipses are supposed to presage a deeply disturbing time. So, fingers crossed, nothing terrible is going to happen in those few countries. Morning after a solar eclipse means that the dew that was formed is going to apparently give you the plague. I don't know what plague. Just don't go out on the morning afterwards of a solar eclipse and touch any dew. 
The 14th of April is the day when you first apparently hear the return of the cuckoo. Cuckoos come in April, they sing their song in May. By the end of June, it changes their tune and July, they fly away. So this is traditionally when very excited sergeant majors would write to the Times in the UK and say, oh, yes, it's the first day of spring because I heard the cuckoo call. Cuckoos hold a lot of superstitions, and so when you first hear the cuckoo calling, it's very important to be outside and not in your bed. If you hear a cuckoo calling whilst you're lying in bed, then it means that somebody in your family is going to not make it this year. But if you hear it whilst your feet are planted outside on the ground, then you will have great luck. And if you've got coins in your pocket, start jingling them and you'll become very rich. Cuckoos were the messengers of the gods, and they're so busy flying around carrying their messages between the gods and the human race that they did not have time to raise their own chicks, hence why they laid their eggs in other birds' nests. The 21st of April is the day the sun enters the house of Taurus, and as always I'm going to read you what the Taurus man and the Taurus woman are like. This comes from the Calendar of Shepherds, which is an almanac of 1604. So this is what the Taurus man and the Taurus woman are. He that is born under Taurus shall be strong, hardy and full of strife. In his youth, he will despise every person and be ireful. Oh dear. He shall go on pilgrimage and live among strangers. I think this says that he's just going to go and settle in a foreign country, isn't it? He shall be rich by women and yet shall experience many pains by women. Oh, poor thing's going to have his heart break. He shall be grieved by sickness at 23 and in peril of water, so don't go sailing, at 33. And he shall live until he's 85. That's quite a long time. Now, my father was a Taurus and none of that happened to him, I think. Anyway, the woman shall be affected labouring. So childbirth's going to be hardcore for you. Very sorry about that. And she shall be a great liar. She shall have many husbands, though, which sounds jolly, and many children, which also sounds jolly. She'll be at her best at 16 years old. No, she peaks early, uh, but then sickly. And if she escapes such sickness, she shall live until she's 75. They're quite long-lived, these tourist people, aren't they? Is this true? What do you think? Are you Taurus? Let me know in the comments below. 23rd of April is St George's Day, the patron saint of the UK. Now, St George, I'm sure you all know, slayed a dragon. And in fact, you should beware of dragons on this day. Uffington, which is where apparently St George slayed the dragon, celebrates this day quite heavily, you know, because they've got Dragon's Hill there, where there is a bare patch of earth, which is where the dragon's blood was spilt when St George slayed it, and therefore the nothing grows there, you know, it makes it completely barren. It is, of course, very apt that he slayed it on the 23rd of April because dragons in ancient mythology represented the cold, harsh darkness of the winter months. And slaying a dragon on the 23rd is meaning that there is, of course, no harsh winter months left for you. I always rather liked St George as a patron saint. He's said to be buried in George Elm Lane in a village in Warwickshire. And he was apparently buried with an elm stake through his heart. I'm not quite sure why they did that. Maybe they thought he was going to rise again. Anyway, this elm stake then grew into a great elm tree, which finally burnt down in, I think, the 1950s. But this is said to be his burial place. The 23rd of April is also the night of the full moon. This is known by the Native Americans as the budding moon, the green shoots moon, and by the Anglo-Saxons as the egg moon. Because of course this is when eggs are at their most abundant. This full moon falls in Scorpio, which brings intense and transformative energy to your workings. And so this is a time for glamour and romance. And finally, this is the first day that bluebells will appear on the 23rd. Beware, though, do not fall asleep in a bluebell wood because you will be taken by the fae. The 24th of April is St Mark's Eve. Now, this is a divination day. And should you dare, if you go to your local church and stand in the porch between 11pm and 1am, you will see the wraiths of all those people in the parish who are going to die enter into the church. If they come out again, it means that they will just have a very serious, dangerous illness from, from which they will recover. 
As the wraiths enter the church, if you look at the state they're in, you'll be able to tell how they died. For example, a person who was executed for murder would go with a noose around their neck. And a person who died by drowning would enter as if he was trying to swim to the surface. Yeah. The other thing that might enter is any of the couples in the parish who are going to get married. They will enter into the church and then they'll come out again. But beware, because if you see your own wraith enter in, you're obviously not going to last the 12 months. So, you know, I'm not sure if I can recommend that or not. It's probably true. The 24th is also a great day for divination. Tarot cards work brilliantly, or runes, if you prefer, or even have a go at reading tea leaves. The 25th of April, it's cowslip day. These once used to be incredibly common over the English countryside, which is why we have a day to celebrate them. However, now due to modern farming practices, they're in decline. However, should you be feeling incredibly tired, why not take a bath and put a couple of cowslips into it and this will banish your tiredness. Otherwise, use ointment, which has got cow slips in it, because it's incredibly good for your complexion. It will get rid of acne, scarring, and all sorts of other skin ailments. The 26th of April is the day that tradition states that the Ark, you know, Noah and his Ark, came to rest after the floods on the top of Mount Ararat. This is the day that God placed his rainbow in the sky. And so this is the start of rainbow season, so to speak. If you see a rainbow today, take note because they are fortunate on this day. You can find a pot of gold at one end of them, generally, leprechaun gold mostly, but gold all the same. If they are shining in the morning, then it means it's going to be stormy. If they're shining in the evening, it's a shepherd's delight. And finally, never point at a rainbow, for this betokens bad luck. Just make sure you know where it's ending and then go and dig up your pot of gold. Or use a pendulum or a metal detector. One of them might work. And finally, we come to the 30th of April. This is one of the scariest days of the calendar. It is traditionally the devil's birthday. It is the start of the Beltane Festival, which starts at dusk on the 30th. And it is the night when the spirits are walking and abroad. It is one of three nights of the year where the veil between uh, the worlds is at its thinnest and you can communicate and talk with spirits, the other two being Midsummer and Halloween. This is also traditionally in the night where you want to keep the witches away because the witches renew their vows to the old one on this night. It is a day when you can see spirits and so they can appear to you in a more solid form. I mean, I generally see spirits in a sort of hazy way, as a sort of heat haze on a road, you know, where the air wobbles slightly. That's how I see spirits. But on this night, it is the night where traditionally you should be able to see a clearer form of them. It is also one of the night when the fairies are out. Fairies were looked upon as malignant creatures, uh, not necessarily kind anyway, um, in previous days. I don't believe in this myself. I've never met a fairy that's anything other than a fairy. You know, they're just fairies. Sometimes they can be a bit annoying by hiding your car keys or whatever you're searching for. But apart from that, they're not, they're not malignant at all. At the same time, you don't want to be looking outside because of all the witches, the fairies, the goblins, the, you know, nasty malignant spirits that are out there trying to annoy you. And it's the devil's birthday, so he is abroad. So stay in, maybe. If you wish to learn about how to be a witch, why not join me on Patreon and become a coven member? It is simply an online learning facility, so should you wish to know how to be telepathic or speak with spirits or see colours in the astral plane, come to a meeting and I will teach you. Please don't forget otherwise to like and subscribe, because it's how I am able to make these videos for you. And I will see you next week with something even better. Mm -hmm.